Hey guys, it's Liv and welcome back to my channel. So it is September, which means that the Newt's Readathon is officially over. If you didn't know, I recently participated this last month in the Newt's Readathon, which is a month-long readathon all inspired by Harry Potter. Super fun. I enjoyed myself so much. I apologize. I'm currently getting over a cold, which you can probably tell because I sound disgusting. So just bear with me on this one. So August was a very busy month for me. I had a few friends come and visit. I went back to Illinois for a weekend. I got a job. I got a job. So with that being said, if you watched my last video where I had my TBR for the readathon, I did plan on going for the Metal Charmer career. Unfortunately, with as busy as I was, I wasn't able to read 12 books. So I went to my head of house, Professor Flitwick, and looked at some of my other career options available. And I did read 10 books, and so I was able to switch around a couple of the prompts and I qualified for the curse breaker position, which I don't think this is cheating. I hope it's not cheating. But anyways, I'm a curse breaker, which is so much cooler than a metal charmer, by the way. I mean, Bill Weasley, here I come. So with that being said, you didn't click on this video just to hear me ramble. So without further ado, let's get into this wrap up. So the first exam that I got through was I got an O in Ancient Runes because I'm an overachiever and it was required. So the A exam for Ancient Runes was the AWAS Partnership Rune. So this was a read recommended by a friend and so shout out to my friend Maggie and thank you for recommending to me Save the Date by Morgan Matson. This is a book about our main character Charlie and her sister is getting married and everything that can possibly go wrong goes wrong. So the wedding planner disappears suddenly. The house alarm won't stop going off. Her crush just shows up out of the blue. And there's a new guy in the picture. It's all very chaotic. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this a lot. It was so fun to read, but I think overall, I like more than anything, I really enjoyed the way that Morgan Matson writes the family dynamics. If you don't know, I am a complete sucker for family dynamics in books. And I think these were really well done. All of these characters have their own like personalities. They're also detailed and like their personalities are also fleshed out, which I thought was really great. You're able to kind of step into the role of being one of their family members and seeing how they interact in their everyday lives, which I thought was really beautiful and really funny at the same time. So this was my A in Ancient Runes and it was really, I really enjoyed this, guys. Moving on to an E, which was a book written in the past tense. I read The Hundred by Cass Morgan, which was the basis for my favorite TV show in the entire world. I am obsessed with this show. I read this book in a day. I don't remember what I rated it. I want to say I gave it a three out of five stars. It's so different from the show that I know and love. Like most of the characters in the show don't exist here. There's a couple others, which I was able to draw some parallels. Graham is Murphy, 10 out of 10. It was kind of easy to see what they based some of them off of. Like in this, Octavia is 14, whereas in the show I want to say she's 16 or 17, but there is a little girl in the show named Charlotte that kind of, I don't know. Young Octavia reminded me of how Charlotte is portrayed, at least in the beginning of her character arc in the show. So was, I kind of could draw these parallels. It was interesting that this book takes place over like only four, like the first four episodes of the show, which kind of blew my mind and the grounders didn't show up yet. So I'm intrigued to see how this series continues. I would love to keep reading them. Um, shout out to Emma for yelling at me until I finally read this. It's been done. And finally, for the Owen oh, Ancient Runes, it's a book that has been on your TBR for ages, and I read Every Day by David Levithan. This was another book that I read in a little under a day. I started it like a night before, and I finished it the next morning. And it's about a soul that wakes up in a different body every day, usually kind of within a few hours of the person that they were last time. They're never the same person twice. And the soul falls in love with this girl named Rhiannon and spends every day trying to find a way to get to see her and spend time with her and get to know her. It was a beautiful story. However, I don't know, some of this just kind of fell flat for me. It was a really good book. 
but I found myself wanting to know more. I know there are other books, but I'm kind of nervous to read them. I know it'll kind of figure out some of the stuff that I feel was kind of left out at the end of the first book. So I guess I'll have to read it and see. And there's my Owen Ancient Runes. Moving on to Arithmancy, which I also needed an Owen. It's a book that ends on an even page number, and I read The Inquisition by Taryn Matthew, which let me find my rating. Okay, I gave this book four out of five stars, which is what I guessed, but I just wanted to make sure. This is the sequel to The Summoner, which is like Harry Potter and Pokemon, but there's demons. I really enjoyed this book. I was so scared that this is going to have a bad case of middle book syndrome, where the second book is simply just linking books one and book three. And while it does set up for a big finale that is the third book, I thought a lot was revealed in here that we didn't know before. There was a lot of action, and you get to see some more of the characters that I have really grown to love. Like, I, I really like Fletcher. I think he's a really great main character. He's got his flaws, he's got his strengths, he has everything that makes him who he is, and he's so well written. That being said, I think the one thing that I didn't quite like about this book is I found some of the things towards the end kind of hard to picture. Like, I'm a, I'm a big person about imagery when it comes to books. I like to picture them in my head. I have my own fan cast and everything. I am that person. But with this one, there was a lot of stuff towards the end that I just found myself really, like, not being able to picture. and that kind of bugged me a little bit, but not too much. I was able to get through it, still really loved it. And I'm so excited to read book three. Like, I need to know how this ends. I'm really excited to know how this ends. Taryn did a great job writing this, and I highly, highly recommend it. And for my E, it was to read a standalone, which I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. This is a book that everyone has raved about for so long. I mean, it's only been out for a couple years, but everyone's raved about it since it came out. I went to the book tour for it and got my signed copy. Book tour was a lot of fun. Oh, it was so much fun. I miss it. This book follows the story of Aza, who is an amateur detective, and she is trying to locate the whereabouts of this billionaire who was taken off in the middle of the night. And it's her story of her friendship and relationship with his son, her friendships with everyone else and her relationship with herself because she has really bad OCD and anxiety which I think is great rep for both of these. You get to see her struggles in a way that paints them as very real and you get to see kind of the effects not only on herself but in those around her and I did think it was a beautiful story in that aspect. I just thought it would kind of focus more on the mystery and there were some aspects that I just didn't really feel fulfilled for that, but it was a very high three-star rating. And my E in Arithmancy. And for my O in Arithmancy, it is a book that is longer than 350 pages, and I read The Red Pyramid by Rick Ray Orton. I am currently reading all of Rick's books with my friend Nicole, as you've probably seen in some other videos. We're currently making our way through all of them, so we started this next series, and I have never read any of these books. I started this book right when it first came out, and I ended up kind of DNFing it but it was more of an I'll read it again someday, and I'm glad I finally read it. This book follows the story of Carter and Sadie Kane. Their father is an archaeologist, and Carter lives with him, and Sadie lives with their grandparents in England. And Carter and Sadie don't really know each other. They're very different. They look very different. Like, there's nothing to kind of tell they are siblings, and they don't feel like siblings. But when their father goes missing, and they're kind of thrown into this world of magicians and the Egyptian gods. They kind of learn about themselves, their relationship with each other, and trying to save the world with a cat. It's cool. It's great. I give this a four out of five stars, and I am currently reading book two, which I am also enjoying so far. I think these books are a lot better than I thought they were when I was... 11 years old. I think I kind of just needed a different mindset reading them. I honestly think I was just disappointed that Percy wasn't in it, but I know there's crossovers. There just weren't crossovers when this book first came out. So I am really excited to devour the rest of the series, and that is my finished arithmancy exam. Moving on to my Defense Against the Dark Arts exam, the A was a book that is black out of the dust jacket, and so I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I'm sure you all knew this was coming because this is the second year that the readathon is going on, and so everything's kind of been really Chamber of Secrets themed, which I am definitely okay with. Chamber of Secrets has always been one of my favorite books of this whole series, and yes, again, 
It is Black Under the Dish Jacket. I'm sure you all know what this is about. I'm sure you all know that I gave this 5 out of 5 stars because it is one of my favorite books of all time. I love the Anniversary House editions. I'm currently collecting them. And so it's cool to see like all of the Ravenclawness to this. I'm a very proud Ravenclaw. If you couldn't tell, I am the head girl. Yeah. And for an E, it is Gilderoy Lockhart's Memory Charm, so it's the first book that comes to mind. And I picked The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. I know if you watched my original TBR for the readathon, I have picked this for a different prompt. But this is always a book that I would think of if I thought of like, oh, what book am I going to read next? I would think maybe this one, but then I would push it away. So I decided it was high time I read this. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I was so in love with this book. This is the companion novel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. It follows Abby's cousins, Molly in particular, and her relationship with her twin sister Cassie. Molly has had 26 unrequited crushes. I feel your pain, Molly. I feel it. So it follows Molly and her twin sister Cassie, and Cassie has a new girlfriend, and with Cassie's girlfriend comes her two best friends and one of them kind of catches Molly's eye. His name is Will. He's a hipster. Super cute. Super sweet. But also there is another guy that she works with and his name is Reed and he's kind of a nerd. She can't really think about the idea of dating him. It's really unthinkable and everyone is trying to push her in the direction of Will and it's her kind of figuring out which of them she likes and if either of them kind of like her back and also really finding herself and who she is without her sister next to her which I again Family Dynamics. I'm a sucker for. These were really well done. I loved this book and you should read it because I think you would love it too. <laughs> and the final exam is my terms exam, which I actually only needed an A for, but because I did read 10 books, I went ahead for the next mark in this, so I got an E for Exceeds Expectations. But my A book was a book that you think has a gorgeous cover, and I read Stalking Jack the Ripper, which is another book that I put off for years. And I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This is a book following Audrey Rose, and she lives in the 1800s in England where everything, there's the very high society. There's a lot of limits put on women in society based on what they can wear, what they can do. They can't go to school. They can't really work. They're just socialites, and they're all just focused on moving up in society. But Audrey Rose is working with her uncle at his morgue and going to his school where he teaches classes and she dresses like a boy so she can learn how to dissect bodies which sounds gross but she was really cool and it was kind of interesting to see how she did what she did and with this she meets Thomas who is another student of her uncle's and the two of them are working to try and solve the Jack the Ripper case. This is a four book series. They're stalking Jack the Ripper, hunting Prince Dracula which is all right right there and I'm gonna read it soon. Then Escaping from Houdini and Capturing the Devil comes out this fall. I'm really excited to see all of these and how the stories intertwine and how Audrey Rose and Thomas continue their adventures. Something that I also liked is that there's pictures from like ye olden days in England about the time that Jack the Ripper was running wild and the name of the victims were all 100% accurate. There's a note from Carrie in the back where she talks about what point she took creative liberty and what was real and so it was really interesting to see these women written as characters and getting to hear their stories and then finding out that these were actually real victims of Jack the Ripper and again Creative Liberty. Jack, the Jack the Ripper case was never actually solved. It was a cold case that a lot of people have still been speculating for years how it ended. This has always been a case that's really intrigued me so it was interesting to have her put a face to the person who did all the killings so that was cool. Again, four out of five stars, and I'm really excited to see where this series goes. And finally, for my E, last book I'm going to talk about today, which is my E exam, which is a read a comic or a graphic novel or a book under 150 pages. And so I read Box 8 by George Saunders, which I raved about in my last one. This is the story of a fox writing a letter to humans. And he talks about a lot of really pressing issues about deforestation and how it affects animals, how we affect animals. I cry when I read this book. It's really cute because, I mean, there's, there's little drawings in here and it's written all like phonetically because it's how the fox learned to speak human. And so 
like it's oh it's so cute i love this book it's so cute but it'll break your heart that was really blunt but it again it's it's adorable but it'll leave you in tears that being said i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you participated this month in the newts readathon what your house is and what your favorite book was that you read this month please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click that bell icon to be notified every time i post a new video all of that will be down below all my social medias and everything so be sure to go follow those thanks again for watching and i hope to see you next time bye